Hey guys, welcome. Live narration, best narration, and this is indeed a match that has potential to be very, very hyped up. These guys have absolutely never played against each other before, probably at all, but certainly in tournament play. And it is one of the all-time greats in M-Dragon against one of the best up-and-comers in Shortage. They are both sitting with a 2-1 record in the lower bracket. And you could certainly argue that either of them could or should have a different record. M-Dragon beat Cowboy Dan with a timely rock slide dodge. Dan would have won the set had he connected with that. Uh, Shortage took a loss against ABR in round one and has since ripped off two wins in a row. But man, had he gotten those, uh, had he gotten less unlucky against ABR, he could actually be 3-0 right now. But shoulda, woulda, coulda, doesn't matter. The bottom line, they're here, they're 2-1. In this very hype matchup here, one of these guys is going to be eliminated from the tournament here and now. Seems to be a balanced offense for shortage. That's ADV hunger switch on the top. Hopefully, for his sake, M-Dragon doesn't have a scar because he did get his Magneton blown up on, and that was a voluntary choice as well. He baton passed, he anticipated the boom, and he was right. It's just a matter of what do you want to get boomed on, and it looks like that was the right call because it's actually a Cloyster team from Dragon. Cloyster and Skarm obviously not going to be together, so it looks like the Magneton was the right Pokemon to sacrifice to the boom. Good read for shortage. Dragon here with seemingly a boom spam, right? I mean, all of the Lax, the Meta, and the Cloyster are going to have boom. Two of them have already shown it. Zapdos here. Yeah, this looks like one of those balanced teams that M-Dragon loves and has loved in recent years. Uh, doesn't really fit a traditional archetype, but just kind of good mon balance. I've seen M-Dragon more than any other player use uh, spikeless Gengar teams, which I don't know that I personally am a huge fan of, but I've seen Dragon use it a lot, and it would fit this theme very well. Obviously, there are spikes in this instance, but... With this being an aggressive boom spam team, I think like Gengar Tar in the back would make a lot of sense. Or if he feels like he absolutely needs a bulky water, maybe it's maybe it's Pert plus Tar in the back. Uh, but you would think with a Cloister team and a bo uh, boom spam team in general, I mean Gengar seems basically like something that he has to have. We'll see how it plays out, but they've played at a pretty quick uh, pace up to this point. And it's now finally a little bit of a lull, so I can kind of catch us up to where we are. Shortage here taking the time. Obviously not thrilled about a 38% Milotic staring down an opposing Zapdos. Would die if he stayed in here and got Thunderbolted. Obviously it's possible that M-Dragon over predicts and goes for a Thunder Wave or something. Or maybe he BPs out trying to catch something, but... The obvious play for Dragon here is to go for Thunderbolt, which if my Lotic were to stay in and eat that, which I don't think it will, I think it will most likely get out of the way, then obviously Thunderbolt would kill it here without any issue. Not a damage roll, just dead Milo. And it's over a minute for Shortage to figure out how to deal with this here. Keeping in mind that Zapdos could roar something out, could toxic something, could BP into like a Dug Trio here to be devastating. It's really tricky for Shortage, but he settles eventually on the Celebi here, comes in on spikes, recovers back up to a Hundo, but unsurprisingly there's a T-Tower in the back that seems basically mandatory for M-Dragon. It's going to come in, it's going to establish Sand, which, you know, there might not even be a T-Tower on Shortage's team, so... This might be the only sand establishing Mon in this one. And Selby not happy with the matchup. Gone a baton pass out of the way. Haven't really seen a great answer to T-Tower. Certainly not my low tick at this point where it's that low and there's the two layers of spikes down. So he's going to have to find another way. Maybe that's a doll if this is a Magdal team. Maybe it's a Metagross if this is like a balanced team. I mean, if he's desperate, he could go to like an off star or something like that or... Maybe a Salamence to get an Intimidate off and hope that M-Dragon doesn't predict it, but he's got to be careful here. Getting his Milotic as low as it is this early on really could have some big ramifications for Shortage. He may be forced into making certain plays that are kind of risky, or at least give M-Dragon the ability to make predictions or snowball the game if M-Dragon's right. I think the Milotic is really valuable. This is a very interesting choice. His answer is going to be Porygon 2 here. That probably is going to indicate a lack of fantastic choices here. 
So that was a hidden power bug. You would think that must have been aimed at the Celebi just staying in, going for Leech Seed or HP Grass or whatever. So we're looking at a physical tar, which based on the team being a boom spam team, I would think is probably a DD tar that is trying to clean up the game. Now whether or not it has lefties here is currently unknown, and that's actually a very important piece of information. Uh, it could either just laugh at a Thunder Wave and shrug it off, or it could be very crippling to a DD tar if it has lefties. M Dragon is not comfortable with it, and he goes into meta here. That's going to get Thunder Waved, and it's going to land a big Meteor Mash through the para and the imperfect accuracy. 62%. Obviously, a CB gross to be doing that amount of damage, and full para is going to kick in on the following turn. Thunderbolt and full para. Again, uh, it'd be good if Shortage could get the Milo in on the boom turn. So far, Dragon has not pulled the trigger. He's going to land another 65% Meteor Mash. And that's that one's for 58. But there's what he's really looking for, an attack raise. This is going to put the pressure on Porygon 2. Shortage decides not to play this game anymore. He goes aggro. He goes with the Thunderbolt. He very well may Thunderbolt again here. And he is just going to let the Porygon 2 take one for the team. Uh, the T-Tar is going to outspeed here, so Porygon 2 is essentially dead. Uh, T-Tar can simply attack, and it's damned if you do, damned if you don't. Porygon dies if he eats an attack. He also dies if he comes back in on spikes later, so he's dead either way, and down that goes. Shortage with the air quotes lead at 4-3, to three, but keep in mind not only is my low tick quite low, but also there's the two layers of spikes down as well. And another issue is, does Shortage have an answer for this DD Tower? There's got to be a Rock Resist other than Magneton somewhere, right? Wow, this is a really aggressive team for Shortage. Here comes Heracross, very dangerous here potentially, especially if he could pull the trigger and get a Swords Dance off on the Switch. That's going to be a huge problem for Dragon. These teams generally do not have a fantastic Switch into this Pokemon. Heracross sometimes gets there. His last might just be Swampert. Rock Slide there would have killed Zapdos. That is an unlucky miss for sure. M-Dragon has been quite adept at dodging crucial Rock Slides in this tournament. And Dragon looking like he's going to get bailed out of this game by some hacks. He's going to dodge the Rock Slide. Then he's going to get a full para exactly when he needs it. And his Zapdos that should be dead is going to beat the Heracross one-on-one -on -one via some luck. The Heracross potentially could have swept Dragon there depending on what the last poke is. Dragon did not seem to have a great answer, but he's going to get bailed out the same way he dodged the set losing Rock Slide against Cowboy Dan. He's going to dodge a crucial Rock Slide here as well. And now Shortage on the back foot once again sends in a fodder tar as, uh, sorry, a fodder Heracross against the tar as it DDs up. He gets an Intimidate off of the last poke, Mence, and there's the Rock Slide aimed right at it. Heracross takes one for the team. Mence comes in again. It's going to be outsped right now. It's not gaining lefties, but there is Intimidate times two on that T tar. Brick Break comes down. That is a mixed or a CB Salamence. He gets out of the way. Down to three Pokemon remaining here. And he's still not comfortable switching in the Milo. Can't say I blame him. Just about anything will kill the Milo at this point. It's going to be very hard to find an opportunity to get that guy in and get him back to health. So Celebi lands the Leech Seed on the DD Tar, going to stay in and recover, risking the Hidden Power. Massive damage, 90% from the unboosted HP bug. What do you do now if you're Shortage? He stays in and hopes there's not another one. He is incorrect. Hidden Power comes down, down goes Celebi. And it's interesting that he doesn't go to Milo there. The Milotic must be slower than what he thinks the DD Tower is going to be, which is surprising because most Milotic, not all, are generally somewhere in the vicinity 204, 5, 6, 7, 8. Some of them can even go 222, which is going to outspeed an adamant DD Tower. But a lot of the time, Milotic is faster than DD Tower, and Shortage didn't even think about it. He instantly didn't make the play. So he must feel very, very confident that his Milotic is not faster than most DD Tars. Hidden Power coming down from what is 
clearly now a CB Mens. Hidden Power is awkward here because both the Zapdos and the Tyranitar are going to resist it. But nevertheless, M-Dragon lets the Claydol go and it's going to leave us in a 2 on 2. But I don't know where this goes for shortage. It's really hard here. I think a DD probably just wins the game. Uh, Hidden Power fishes for a crit and gets it. But it's not good enough and now it's going to be shortage who has to... Uh, dodge the clutch rock slide he's not able to do it and that is effectively going to end the game and that's really rough for shortage because now that we know what the last poke was Claydol uh, that's actually even unluckier if it had been say a Swampert especially one with Protect or a Gengar those are both things that do not necessarily auto lose to Heracross but now that we know that it was in fact Claydol we know that that Heracross was incredibly dangerous and that Rock Slide dodge from Dragon was massive because Zapdos would have died and then Dragon would have been left with only T-Tar and Claydol against Heracross, which are just two Mega Horns away from death. Very easily, Shortage could have and arguably should have won this game, but the nature of Rock Slide... 90-10. Sometimes it is just going to miss. M-Dragon dodges his second incredibly important rock slide of the tournament and takes game one from Shortage, who... I mean, Shortage has looked great this tour. It, it feels like the only times he's lost, there's been heavily unfavorable luck against him, and he's won all the other times. I just I don't think there's a lot to fault. He's, he's a guy who's playing like he belongs to be here. He's been very competitive with the top, top players. And like I said, he easily could have won this game that we just saw. But shoulda, woulda, coulda, doesn't matter. The reality of the situation now is that M-Dragon is one game away from knocking Shortage out. Shortage is going to have to win not only this game too that's just beginning, but also a theoretical third game. Otherwise... That is going to be it. Let me just go ahead and upload this game real quick since M-Dragon is hiding them. And then we'll come right back here. We've got Zapdos on Zapdos lead. And we've got a quick disconnect here from Shortage. That'll give me an opportunity to get a sip of my drink while we wait for him to reconnect. And he's back. All right, so uh, Zapdos on Zapdos is interesting. There's a lot of things that can happen here. Uh, they can just Thunderbolt each other. They can Thunder Wave each other. They can Toxic each other. Uh, HP Ice is sometimes a thing, though generally you just want to go for Thunderbolt if that's what you're doing. BP also makes it interesting. If one of them passes and the other one doesn't, that could be a big disadvantage. Uh, if they both Baton Pass, you want to be the guy who Baton Passes second. It's tricky here. Uh, I would, I'm surprised that they're taking time. I would think that like Zapdos is one of the pokes that you always plan for. So you always know your opening line. I mean, basically T-Tire, Salamence, Meta, Zapdos are all things that you should immediately know what you're doing on turn one against. But Shorter's sure, taking a minute and he's going to switch out, not Baton Pass out, which does not mean that he doesn't have Baton Pass. He might have just not wanted to play the game with guessing what the speed is on the other side. And he's going to bring in a Lax. His play after being Thunder Wave is going to be Body Slam. He's going to be met with a T-Tar from M-Dragon. And the T-Tar has lefties. Focus Punch coming down. And we see that Shortage for the second game in a row has opted to bring my low tick. It's going to eat the Focus Punch 46%. He's going to go for it again. It's going to be Recover. And it's going to be Focus Punch again. This one's slightly more. 47% this time. Will he recover again? He will, and he's going to get out of trouble here. Uh, I think what M-Dragon wanted is for Shortage to go for Surf to prevent another Focus Punch, and then Zapdos would have come in and threatened it, but Shortage didn't fall for that. He gets a recover off. Claydol gets shown. We may be looking at a Mag Doll here. Uh, the Mag is yet to be determined, but it makes a lot of sense with what we've seen. Both Milotic and Lax definitely want Skarmory out of the way, so I'm thinking we're looking at a Mag Doll from Shortage. And that is a huge focus punch crit. My Lotic going to die to just that, plus the sand doesn't get a chance to do much of anything. And once again, M-Dragon the beneficiary of some relevant luck, and Shortage finds himself on the back foot early on. 
This is going to be a mark of how good of a player is he really. It's going to be very difficult, now even more so, losing the Zapdos Thunderbolt trade. I mean, yes, he kills the T-Tower, but one-for-one -one trades are not good when you're already clearly behind. And just 10 turns into this game, Shortage finds himself in a hole. So like I said, it's now time to find out just how good this player really is. We all know that he's good. Let's find out how good. It's going to be Last Poke Mag here, as we see. This is clearly an all-in on Lax team. That's a mistake from Shortage. He's going to get cute, go to Mag, thinking there'd be a Skarm there. This perfectly sets up the Dug Trio trap for M-Dragon. And now Shortage is going to gamble that he's faster. He better be here, or he is in a world of hurt. So maybe he did that intentionally, gambling or knowing that he'd be faster than the opposing Dug. I don't know if that was just a blatant misplay or if that was actually brilliant for Shortage. I'm going to have to analyze that after. But the fact remains that he is in a hole right now. 4-3, to three, and M-Dragon has not even revealed half of his team. But it's pretty straightforward, really. These teams, more or less, only have one win condition. It's the Lax. So he's going to have to find a way to get that lack set up, and he's going to have to hope that M-Dragon doesn't have a plethora of things. He's going to have to hope there's not a CB mod on the other side. He's going to have to hope there's not a boom on the other side, which there is, we see now. This Metagross is absolutely going to have boom. He's going to have to hope there's not Leech Seed on the other side. There's not Destiny Bond on the other side. All sorts of bad things that can happen here. Shortage in this game is getting picked apart. In fact, if he doesn't kill the meta here, this game might be over. I think we're done right now. I think this game two is real unexciting. I think meta's going to outspeed and boom and we're done. But he doesn't go for it. Does he not have boom? Is that is that what's happening here? I can't believe meta didn't explode. He must not have it. But he's going to concede. I'm surprised. I don't know why he doesn't play it out. I mean... Either the I, the Reg Ice or the meta are going to have boom, yes, but like, that might have been a premature concession here. What if, hypothetically, I don't like that concession for shortage at all. What if, hypothetically, the meta doesn't have boom, which I think, I, I mean, it's CB, so that must be what's happening here. I must have just missed that it's CB. Yeah, maybe it's not premature. I mean, in this one-on-one -on -one situation... The Regis can simply be fully paralyzed, and the Lax can just kill him. That's fine and well, but then what do you do about the meta? So I guess the play would be... I don't know, it still doesn't seem over. I mean, in theory, Lax can just curse up a bunch of times while the Regis sits there in full paras. Hypothetically, he could get like three curses in a row while the Regis just full paras the whole time. Obviously, the odds of that are not good, but why wouldn't you play it out? I, I would have at least gone for it, given it a shot. But he didn't want to. He he thought that he was dead, and certainly mathematically, the large majority of the time, not 100% of the time, but the large majority of the time, he was dead. And that is going to be a disappointing way for Shortage to go out. Uh, like I said, I definitely think that he could have won that first game at least. This game, he was behind basically the whole time, and I don't love the team choice. I'm never really a fan of these all-in on lax teams. It's just they just don't have enough ways to win. Uh, some people like them, some people don't. I definitely am in the camp that does not. Uh, but it felt like M-Dragon was ahead pretty much the whole time in this game too. However, like I said, not going to keep harping on it, but it definitely felt like Shortage could have, maybe even should have won game one. Who knows what that would have left us for the rest of the series. But ultimately, only thing that matters is what did happen. That is an M-Dragon victory 2-0 pretty quick. He's going to stay alive in this tour in the lower bracket, which is going to have to continue playing every round from here on out until there is no more lower bracket. And on the other side of that, Shortage in his debut, not bad at all. 2-2 record, which is fine for a first-time player, especially when there was definitely some bad luck involved in those losses. But nevertheless, he is going to be out of the tournament. Decent showing. Hope to see him next year, but he's going to be done for this one. There you have it, 2-0 for M-Dragon. Thumbs up if you guys liked it. I will see you guys in the next video.